All right, Tom Fitton joins us now. He's president of Judicial Watch, and uh, he's been leading the charge with so many, uh, so many uh, requests, freedom of information requests. Uh, it is making this administration and making the the president. It's giving a defense against an all out attack by what was left of Barack Obama's FBI. Tom, there's an investigation going on, and while the president contemplates whether he should declassify certain things, we found out some text messages yesterday between Peter Strzok, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. What can you tell us? Well, the text messages, of course, that have been sitting, the Justice Department and FBI have been sitting on for probably a year now, uh, show that uh, Strzok and Page were talking about media leaks just before some major news stories appeared about, uh, you know, this Carter Page investigation. I mean, the idea that you've got senior FBI officials talking about, quote, a media leak strategy, you know, just ought to blow our tops. And uh, this FBI and this Justice Department are completely blasé in the face of this corruption because it's these folks, Page, Strzok, Comey, McCabe, the rest of them, that created the basis for the special counsel investigation. You know, without Strzok, there'd be no special counsel investigation. Without the dossier, there'd be no special counsel investigation. Without this focus on Page, there'd be no special counsel investigation. So the special counsel's built on a sand of corruption. And this is why, in my view, it needs to be shut down. Strzok, remember, worked the Russia investigation for well over a year plus, nearly two years, before, uh, in secret, uh, Mr. Mueller had to pull him off the investigation because the IG got a hold of the uh, got a hold of the text messages like these. Uh, it's just extraordinary. Yeah, basically, he says to Lisa Page, uh, uh, "Let's find out. Let's talk. Let's let's talk about a media leak strategy." His lawyer came out and said, "No, we're talking about to stop leaks coming from the FBI, not actually have leaks come out of the FBI." But there's a problem with that. You got another text message. A follow-up shows that struck his paging is praising Page for the media leak, right. and two days later, a story appears in the Washington Post that talks about a Car- Carter Page FISA warrant. So his lawyer, uh, I think, really has to come up with a plan B because I'm not buying it. Are you? I, I'm not either. You know, Struck's legal defense on this is: Who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? Uh, the insurance policy doesn't mean insurance policy. When I say we're going to stop Trump, it doesn't mean we're going to stop Trump. And when I say uh, we have a media leak strategy and praise people about a leak, uh, it, is, it means that we're actually against leaks. Uh, we're not going to check our brains at the door, and that's why Mr. Strzok uh, is, uh, is no longer a member of the FBI. Would you also say that the media stories are also used in the FISA warrant to show that judge, hey, listen, not only do I have information, but this stuff is coming out in the press, but yet they fed the press. Well, I call it the self-licking ice cream cone. Uh, they cite uh, themselves in three different ways as sources and pretending that they're three different sources when, in fact, it's just one source uh, yep. putting the information out in a variety of formats. And uh, this is, uh, and you raise a good point, uh, further indication of how the FISA court process was abused. And it brings us to the issue that we raised initially is that uh, you know, Judicial Watch just uncovered there were no FISA court hearings into the Carter Page warrants. All we have now are the warrant applications that show the dossier was misused. That portion has been declassified that we have. We want the president to re- declassify the rest. And this is for the reason to declassify the rest. If Strzok had anything to do with it, you can bet it was corrupt, and you can bet he was running the warrants. Uh, Tom Fitton with us. So, Tom, I was fascinated by that special that Jake Tapper did with George Papadopoulos, because this 28-year-old on the Foreign Policy Council that the president met with, I think, once, uh, was trying to impress everybody to get a full-time job. He says that flat out. Uh, At some point, he wasn't telling the truth to the FBI. He cuts a deal with the FBI, gets 14 days in jail. He finally is able to tell his story and mysteriously chooses Jake Tapper to do it. This is what stuck out with me. His conversation with Stefan Halper, a Cambridge professor we now know is on the payroll of the FBI, who we know was the this, this source. Now, you tell me what you think is happening here from your experience. Let's listen. I received an unsolicited uh, <clears throat> email from uh, Stefan Halper, who uh, I thought was a Cambridge professor, inviting me. So he reached out to me and he said, I want you to write a paper for me on your expertise. I joined uh, him uh, about a week later over drinks at the Sophie Tell in London, where uh, 
all of a sudden, uh, he pulls out his phone. Everyone has phones when they meet with me. And he places it in front of him, and he begins to tell me, uh, so George, uh, of course, uh, hacking is in the interest of your campaign. Uh, of course, the Russians are helping you. These open-ended questions, and of course, you're probably involved in it too. Are, is That's correct, right, so George? What's going on here? Well, Stefan Halper's trying to corner him, and he's working as an informant for who knows who, the FBI, the CIA, maybe the Defense Department. Uh, of course, he was getting paid by the Defense Department. What I find interesting, Brian, is that all of these activities took place overseas. So Halper uh, approached, it looks like, Papadopoulos, approached Carter Page. Uh, he tried to get J.D. Gordon, who was another uh, 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 Trump campaign advisor, to go overseas and meet with him and do work for him there. And if you understand what goes on here in terms of the restrictions that the FBI and DOJ are under in terms of spying on domestic operations and domestic entities, they were trying to bypass that by doing this work overseas and bypassing the restrictions that would have prevent them from spying uh, directly on the Trump campaign here at home. So they got around it by going overseas and running an operation against the Trump campaign overseas. Unbelievably corrupt. It's as if you're leading the witness. You know, I can't know you. I know you have this stuff. I know. I know. Oh yeah. Get well, this. he was trying to entrap him, right. and he was trying to trying to get the dirt on him. Why? You know, for Barack Obama, I have no doubt knew about this. Comey, I had no doubt, knew about this. Lynch, I had no doubt, knew about this operation against them. That's why they were so desperate to keep Halper's name out of it. So now let's go fast forward to Mifsud. So Mifsud is somebody who is also uh, a professor that worked with FIFA. And he was a high-ranking guy in FIFA and one of the few to emerge from this whole investigation unscathed. And who was known for their FIFA investigation? Christopher Steele. Exactly. That's how That's he exactly. earned his stripes with the U.S. Is that this guy's tremendous, and the FBI worked with him, and they make all these great arrests to try to clean up world soccer, the most corrupt organization around. But not Mifsud. Mifsud emerged unscathed. What role does Mifsud say in this whole play in this whole investigation? Well, he was part. He he was talking to uh, Papadopoulos as well, but he's also working on behalf of the FBI as well. So you had Papadopoulos being come out uh, being come out by two at two angles. Uh, by FBI informant sources, operatives, you, uh, Stephen Halper and Misfit. Uh, Misfit was getting money, if I recall correctly, directly from the FBI in tunes of millions. So, um, you know what's interesting? My, Papadopoulos is only getting 14 days in jail. Even the courts think it's a joke. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the equivalent of a jaywalking ticket uh, in terms of a sentence. They wanted six months, up to six months, uh, the process, all the power of the Justice Department and special counsel is pressuring the court to put put him in jail up to six months. And the court said, are you kidding me? Two weeks. So I'm just going to take a step back. I don't want to get people confused. I mean, we got a million things going. we got a hurricane bearing down on us. 9-11, look back. The Woodward book, the, the editorial, the anonymous editorial. I don't want to get people confused. Let's just, let's just take a look at this. You're trying to get this ancillary player like Carter Page, who the president still has never met and he's never spoken to. This other guy who was sitting down in a council because nobody wanted to be in the president's foreign policy council because they thought he had no shot of winning. And they're targeting these two players. Now, it's not, this is not, you know, Dave Bossy and Corey Lewandowski and early on. These are minor players by all accounts. And at the same time, they're saying this is proof that we have to investigate Trump's collusion with Russia. It doesn't make any sense. Like, there's, there's, there's a lack of logic here. And then they get Paul Manafort, and they're going to put him in jail for 380 years. They need him to flip on Trump. He would in a second, I believe. But he does nothing on Trump. Right. He was right. recommended right. by Tom Barack to try to wrangle delegates, and he would work for free because Corey Lewandowski was in, many people thought, over his head at the time. You can pretend like he's trying to, to wrangle for the Ukraine or doing something else, but that's not what happened. So what is going on? Do, aren't people? I'm shocked more people aren't outraged by this, Tom. Well, yeah, because you've got a partisan uh, media, uh, media class and uh, the establishment of both parties— 
uh, don't want to take on the basis of the Mueller operation. I mean, even our friends in Congress who are very aggressive in trying to get records out, they tend to leave Mueller al- alone. And this is why they're afraid of getting too deep into this. And, you know, people ask, why was this all going on? Why were they doing this? Why were they doing that? Well, the simplest explanation is is because they were corrupt. They were looking for pretexts to take out Donald Trump because they didn't want him to win. Because there's no other reasonable explanation, because spycraft and tradecraft and intelligence operations would never have targeted anyone so low on the rung, and they certainly wouldn't have targeted a presidential campaign based on such specious reasons and uh, uh, so uh, ridiculous allegations. So what, why did they do it? It's because they were corrupt. Peter Strzok said he didn't want Trump to get elected. Obviously, Comey didn't want Trump to get elected. The Loretta Lynch didn't want Trump to get elected. Barack Obama, by the way, he was out campaigning for Hillary, and people don't understand this. That was the most significant intervention by a president, an incumbent president in a presidential campaign in 100 years. Candidates for presidency regularly did not have the support or the active campaign intervention of incumbent presidents. It just hadn't happened in in recent American history. So you had Obama personally involved in the race, being briefed on these ap- operations against the candidate who was trying to uh, oppose the, me- the person he was supporting. Uh, it, it's just nightmarish. And the IGs recognized that the Russian investigation was spurred, at least in part, uh, by uh, uh, Strzok's potential uh, anti-Trump bias. So, you know, the proof is out there. And my view is we've got to shut the Mueller operation down as a result. Uh, you know, we, yeah. don't need, we, uh, we want more evidence, but... More than enough to at least pause it while there's a full-blown investigation. This is what annoys me about it, Brian, is that because the president's under investigation, the establishment class tells us we're not allowed to do any investigation into the corruption associated with the initiation of that investigation or its ongoing abuses. Isn't that convenient? It's a catch-22. So the pre- the, the, there's no check on the Justice Department now because the president's not allowed to be president. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's got to stop. Right. It's got to uh, stop. And, and by the way, obviously, this president, more than anybody else, he hanging this over his head, it's really weighing on him as, on the country. And uh, Bill Clinton would tell you, even though it was self-inflicted, the investigation that Ken Starr did absolutely affected his decisions on a regular basis. So how is the country benefiting from this? We have to really examine this. I, I agree that a corrupt president should not get away with corruption because he could be distracted. But this, this way is not working. So uh, the other thing to bring up, which you brought up a, a fine point, I never thought about it. Barack Obama did did more campaigning than Hillary Clinton. He actually was going to diner, shaking hands for her, and it didn't work. Remember Al Gore didn't even want Bill Clinton on the stump? Remember right, John McCain right. told George Bush, please stay away, I'll meet you once? Right. Do you remember that, uh, that Ronald Reagan didn't do anything except for eventually endorse Bush 41 for president? And that was his vice president for eight years? So yep. this is yep. extraordinary. I never ever thought about it. But now that he's back, we'll see if that's going to resonate at all. And you can go back 100 years and you'll see that happening again and again over time. And this is the first time it's happened in a century. So the president had this unusual, Barack Obama had this unusual interest in wanting Hillary Clinton elected. You know, I think not only to protect his, uh, his legacy of uh, big government socialism, uh, but to keep, keep stuff like this from coming out. Yeah, and lastly, what about the president declassifying the FISA warrant? People are worried about the precedent. People are worried about the intelligence. There might be something wrapped in there that is top secret that might get out, and that might really demoralize the intelligence agencies. With that risk, do you think the president should still do it? Oh, if I thought there was anything serious that needed to be protected, I would advise him not to do it. Uh, we've already seen that the deep state it says that, and it turns out not to be true, because the portion of the FISA warrant he did declassify, that's the reason we got them under FOIA, because he made the decision to declassify the page material uh, earlier this year. It showed that uh, corruption, that the, uh, the DNC dossier dishonestly used in the warrants and all of the information that was withheld. And people who have read it, who are in responsible positions in Congress, has said that there's nothing there that deserves to be classified or, or, or it's classified improperly. So uh, he, he just needs to do his proper diligence and oversight, make sure nothing's done that is inappropriate, uh, but release the information. And in my experience, I've been doing this for 20 years, 
in politically sensitive situations like this, classification is used as a method not to protect the national security, but to protect individuals and agencies from being held to account for their corruption. He is uh, Tom Fitton. Tom, thanks for your, uh, your tireless work. He's president of Judicial Watch. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome, Brian. Thank you.